good just thanking you all for coming and telling you before you leave you have to take some rubla, some cake, something. Do not leave me with this. Um, Joyce is the one who's really coordinating and running this, so I'm going to let her take over from here. Go, Joyce. Oh, uh, buddy, Julie, uh, this is uh, really a treat to have you here, sincerely. So I want you all to know that there are a few things that Julie has done for this community that really deserves a tremendous amount of support. Uh, one of them is, I don't know how many of you are aware that Julie was actually the head of the, uh, the census in New York City. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, I'm sure that you're all aware of the fight we had to keep Roosevelt Island from being drop kicked to Queens. Yeah, that's right. Not only did protect Julie's position here as a council person, but then we had to do it all over again for Rebecca Seawright. Uh, and uh, Julie, in particular, has been so supportive for this community. I don't know if many of you are aware of the involvement that she's had with the F train debacle. Yes. That yes. All yes. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that, uh, that we're actually having uh, the tram as rapidly as we have it is largely based on Julie's input with uh, with Riyadh. So. And also support for our schools, uh, support for our library, uh, and the list goes on and on. So I want to just give Julie a sense of who we all are, because you know I know I think every face here in this room. Uh, but Julie, unfortunately, has not had the, uh, had the pleasure of meeting all of you. So I just want to want her to get a sense of who we all are. So let's start with everybody who's here from, uh, from River Cross. Raise your hand. <laughs> so the vast majority, you know, when I ran for office, I learned uh, really all about of what it takes to get elected here in this community. And the people that are actually the voters in this community are the people that live in River Cross and the people that live across the street in the right. landings. The seniors. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all of you who live across the street in the landings, raise your hand. Okay, I'm getting there. <laughs> and everybody that lives in Island House, raise your hands. And everybody that lives in Westview, Hey. Hey. Do we have some folks from South Point here? All right. Oh, yes. 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 No, all good. We've got a few new South Town people. How about Octagon? Uh, they're kind of way <laughs> out there. And uh, unfortunately, not a lot of them Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> So, you know, there are just, you know, so many ways in which Julie has been very, very helpful for this community, and I'm so glad to see that uh, we've been able to have this kind of turnout for her. And I know that, uh, I doubt that Julie will ask uh, for you to do so, but for any of you to actually put your hands in your pocket and help with her campaign would really be very, very helpful uh, this evening. So, yeah. That would be a wonderful thing to help support her, uh, her election. Exactly. So the floor is okay, yours. Thank you. Joyce. So um, speaking of the census, how many people are we? 12,000? 14,000? Oh, that's a great question. 12,000. 12, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, let, me, well, let, me, can I, let me start speaking and then I'm happy to talk about the census if, if that's okay. So first of all, Joyce, Margie, I want to thank you all so much for organizing this. When you had this idea to kind of bring everyone together, I thought we'd get a few folks. I mean, to see this room so packed is <laughs> just really a testament to you both and a testament to all of you because I know there are so many things that you can be doing on a busy Thursday night and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk a little bit with me. So for those of you that, that don't know me, I have been in the city council the past two years by way of background, I'm an attorney. I started my career as a lawyer at a law firm, and after practicing law for seven years, and I practiced regulatory law, I left to open up a small business in Lower Manhattan. It was called Vine Restaurant. I don't know if anyone went. This was in 1999, and I opened up my restaurant and catering business in Lower Manhattan. I had 100 employees, so it was a larger small business. And I was working like any small business owner 24-7 on my small business, and then 9-11 hit. 
my business was located a couple blocks away from ground zero and uh, my business was completely destroyed. Every window was blown out, the white gray ash was in every inch and crevice of my business. And um, I decided at that point to get involved in rebuilding that community. At the time, I was living in Lower Manhattan. This was in 1999, so I lived a couple blocks from Ground Zero as well. My husband and I were evacuated from our home. And in the weeks after 9-11, I started a not-for-profit that was focused on rebuilding the community. That is how I first got involved in public service. I honestly never in a million years thought I would run for elected office. But when 9-11 hit and I started a not-for-profit, we uh, ended up being the first organization on the ground that was focused on rebuilding Lower Manhattan. I was on the community board down there um, for a number of years, and then some folks came to me and asked me to run to chair the board, and I chaired community board one in Lower Manhattan after 9-11 for seven years. And was intimately involved in the rebuilding of downtown. I'm still on the board of the 9-11 Memorial. I was on the jury that picked the 9-11 Memorial and was extremely involved. Um, I have subsequent to then, I moved to the east side. My nexus to the upper east side is that my mother and grandmother were Holocaust survivors from Hungary. They came to the east side um, after surviving the Holocaust. They settled on the upper east side in what was then known as Little Hungary. And so um, th th that's the community that welcomed them after really the horrors of the Holocaust. Um, I moved to the east side after living in downtown in 2014 um, and have proudly been there since then and I love the community. It's really a, 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 such a tremendous honor to represent you all in the council and I sp honestly feel a very special nexus to the community because it helped welcome my mother and grandmother in a time of crisis. So now I'm running for re-election. I have a lot of city government experience because I served as commissioner of three different New York City agencies, and so I'll talk a little bit about the census. I served as commissioner of the Department of Consumer Affairs, launched the paid sick leave law, and, and a whole number of other measures, and increased consumer restitution by 70% when I was commissioner. I also served as commissioner of media and entertainment for that agency, and I focused there on increasing economic opportunities for women in the creative sectors in particular. And then I served as the city census director, which 100% was the hardest job I've ever had. And I say that because it's one thing to be commissioner of an existing agency and to run it. It's a whole nother ball of wax when you have to create a new agency out of nothing. The city had never, ever had any entity in city government that was focused on the census, which is shocking because when you think about it, billions and billions of dollars depend on how we do on the census. So the mayor asked me to set up this new entity, which I did. I also at the same time negotiated to take the number three job at the city law department, because I have been a lawyer for 20 years, and I was very interested in being um, focused on the citizenship case. If you recall, the Trump administration on the census put a question on the census and asked, are you a US citizen? That question hadn't been on the census in 70 years, and it was meant to depress um, turnout in blue states where there are a lot of immigrants and a lot of um, undocumented individuals, and it was a very effective strategy because if we would not have sued, and to be clear, the New York Attorney General's office led the suit, the city was a, it was a partner on the suit, but the New York AG's office was a lead. If we would not have sued, that question would have remained on the census, and, and we would have done the horrifically bad in terms of our, our response. But we won our case at the Supreme Court. I was there for the whole argument. Very exciting. Highlighting my legal career was with that case. And, um, and the work we did on the census, I'd say it was the hardest job because when you're creating a new entity, an agency from <coughs> scratch, it's, it's very, very difficult. And we had to do that during COVID. So the census began in March of 2020, um, the same time that COVID hit New York, and we all know we were the epicenter of COVID. But I'm happy to say we finished number one of all major cities across the country. We were number one. Number and one. Number one in terms of census response. So the way to think about the census, the best way to think about it is it's a national competition for our piece of the pie. The pie is, of course, the federal dollars that are being allocated by Congress, and everyone is fighting for their share. You get a proportionate share, 
based on your response. And we had, the, of all major cities, the number one response. And in, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, of the top five performing counties across the country, we had four of them here in New York. So it was really- so what, a, what is the percentage that that represents of, the, of possible response? Well, we got to close to 99. So it's, a very, it's complicated because I, I, I could spend hours talking about this, but there's something called self-response, which is when you respond to the census. And then there is when we send out door knockers to get the information. And we, the city of New York, oh, you did that. Thank you so much. I couldn't get into any of my buildings. <laughs> you did so, wow. This is very significant. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the city, the city of New York sent out our own door knocking teams with iPads, which had never been, the, the city had never done any of this before. So in any event, we did very well in the census. So now I'm in the city council representing, well, I'm running for re-election. I do want to say, um, I really, really would appreciate your vote. I'll talk a little bit about what I've done in the council and then a little bit about the dynamics of this race. So. Um, in the city council, I have passed 11 bills, which is the highest amount of any council member. And I say that simply because I've really tried to focus my energy and my time on impactful legislation that moves the needle. So one of my bills, the Healthcare Accountability and Consumer Protection Act, mm -hmm. mandates that New York City hospitals have to disclose the price of all of their medical procedures. This really matters because if you think about it, there's simply no other service that you're gonna procure in your lifetime where you're buying the service and yet you don't know what you're paying. And that is what healthcare is. You basically go to the hospital at your most vulnerable time and then you come home and then you get an enormous bill. And you have no idea what that bill will be until it comes in the mail and then it's like the sticker shock, my God, I can't believe this bill is so high. So what my bill does is it now discloses the price of these medical procedures. And so it's not only a vital consumer protection issue, it's a fiscal issue. And I say that because right now in New York City, we have a $107 billion budget. We spend 10% of that on public sector employee health care. So folks who are working for the city, of which we have over 300,000, we pay for their health care, and that including retiree and dependent and public sector employee health care is $11 billion, 10% of the city budget. Wow. Five years ago, that number was $6 billion. Wow. So this is like unsustainable. It is estimated that my bill could save the city up to $2 billion a year. Why? Because once we know what these hospitals are charging, the city of New York can harness its purchasing power through this new office that my bill creates and we can finally renegotiate and lower the price of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And it helps the private sector equally as well in that regard, so it's not only for the public sector. I also passed a package of bills um, on universal child care. So child care is one of the most expensive items um, in people's budget. On average, it's $21,000 a year, which is simply unaffordable for the vast majority of New Yorkers. So my bill, uh, and it's a package of bills, helps to subsidize child care for those in need. I also am uh, the chair of the City Council Small Business Committee, which is great because I'm a former small business owner, so it's very exciting to chair that committee. And another bill I passed creates a one-stop shop portal <coughs> that consolidates all city licenses and permits into one website and one app. So those are just a few of the bills that I've passed and I've really been um, focused on. I'm obviously very focused on constituent services. I, you know, we really strive and aim to ensure that we are as responsive as possible to constituent issues. And then the last bucket of items is budget. I've been able to return over $4 million to this district. That is the highest amount of funding that this district has ever had for our parks, for our schools. So. So, you know, for technology upgrades, for every public school in the district, every single one of them, I funded technology upgrades. Because again, we want our students to be at the forefront in terms of the need. Now, Joyce mentioned some Roosevelt Island specific issues. <coughs> Transportation, I know with the F train how difficult this has been, and that is why we were able to negotiate, in terms of the tram, more frequent service to really hope to um, help on that issue. More recently, and I know Rick wrote about this, but I sent a letter to Riyadh about the tram because the tram has been, as I know, shaking. I mean, I was on it last week when I was on it, it was shaking. Personally, I saw that. Uh, and so I wrote to Riyadh and got a response immediately. 
and they are now going to be looking at the safety of that and, and do, you know, there need to be additional inspections. They have to really be focused on that because I'm concerned it's a hazardous mm -hmm. issue. Um, so those are obviously on the transportation, some of the fronts. I want to talk a little bit about COLAR because I was able to get, you know, a lot of funding for the hospital, and that is obviously incredibly, incredibly important. Um, in terms of open space, green space, making sure, and Roosevelt Island is such a gem. I mean, it's so you all have the most amazing community. I just feel that, you know, every time I'm here, just seeing the green space, seeing the water, and just I want to make sure that we are doing everything possible to support that open space, open green space, support the parks. Also, we support the Little League, so I'm always thrilled to come out and, and throw the first pitch on that. Um, but I could speak a long time more about what I've been working on, but those are a few highlights just in terms of budget, legislative priorities, and then you know, specific issues in terms of Roosevelt Island. I thought I'd leave it really to questions so I can engage with all of you on, on any issues that you might have for me. I will say um, I'm running against a Republican opponent. Um, I'm really focused on increasing turnout to the highest amount that we can because I'm worried that a lot of people don't know this election. You know, it's an off cycle year. So all the time when I'm out in the district and talking to people, people have no idea that November 7th there's an election. Early voting starts this weekend. Um, so please, you know, I always believe in early voting. You never know. If you're just on that on note, the art gallery has donated the space for early voting, so yes. you can get yes. early voting at the gallery. Exactly. Thank, yes. you. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yes. If you're able to volunteer, please, this is David Casada, my campaign manager. Please let David know because we really, really need help. We need help. And then poll site visibility is really important just because we want to make sure that voters know and, and it's just incredibly helpful if you're able to volunteer at all. I would so appreciate it. And I'm happy, I'll stop there. I can say a lot more, but I will stop and answer questions that you might have for me. Okay. Well, first of all, as president of the Kohler Auxiliary, thank you very much. We got a lot of money, discretionary funds mm -hmm. for a new <coughs> resident greenhouse, and a Kohler really needed it, and I thank you. And as the Democratic um, coordinator, you all better show up downstairs and vote. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there 90 hours. So Margie just sent the food. My <laughs> 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 other suggestion is Hold the Historical Society, my other hat, yes. is the only organization that now gets discretionary funds. Everyone else either got disgusted with the situation mm -hmm. or just dropped out. There used to be six, seven, eight organizations. Mm -hmm. So I really want your camp, your office, when it comes around, because we know you're going to be reelected, to make sure the budget, not just the city council, but your office and forms are not for profits that yeah. they're eligible for mm -hmm. discretionary sure. funds. Sure. Sure. So that, that's, that's very, very good point. Okay. Over time. David, could you make a note of that that we just need to make sure the left people know that eligibility? Yes, so that's I'll, a great point. Thank you. So I'll see you all downstairs. <laughs> and I'll, so I'll give you the road <laughs> <Okay. laughs> And on that note, this is not a city issue, but REAC by law can spend $900,000 in grants to the community, but they spend 150, which leaves us very, very, very short of funding. Yes. Um, we, I've been working with the Reaver Art Gallery, and I mean, our, our, we, we have um, fixed costs because we have to pay rent and all, and we can't, we can't seem to get money because none of the grants give you rent money. They give you money for specific projects. Right. But nobody gives you money for rent, and that's one where we're falling down. So if you know any way that we can get grant money to help us pay the rent, we'd be very happy to do that. Okay. What convinced Riyadh to let loose? Yeah. Dave, <laughs> Dave, we make time that that. I'm going to, yeah, okay, I can contact you. Okay. I mean, that's not acceptable. They're not unlocking those funds. They're Thank you. They're, I don't know what they do with them. I, I heard once that they said they really spend the 900 but it's like with the youth program that they give them land, and the value of the land is equal. It's nonsense. It's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. And just so you know, we have three REAC board members here, Ben, Lydia, and mm -hmm. Howard. There you are. Um, so when we start to ask questions, maybe Great. they can answer some for us. And we also have a significant amount of poll workers here. Oh, oh yeah. Poll workers. Thank you. Poll workers. Yes, poll workers. Thank you for doing that. Not poll dancers. Poll dancers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm David Andrews. I'm on the River Cross Board. I've lived here 45 years, and one of the projects that I took on when the select bus service started was to ask the question, why do we not have a select bus service stop at 60th Street and 2nd Avenue? And the answer was always, Roosevelt Island and the tram is not a transportation hub. No, oh, yes. We have a, we, that, and things have changed. We're now living on the campus of a world-class university. We have the subway, we have the tram, we have the tram and the subway that meet fairly close. But we, on cold winter mornings, watch the select bus pass us by empty. And you wave as five buses go by before we get a single bus. Is there any way you could prevail upon the MTA? Sure, I will try. Okay, so select bus on the 60th second. Okay, got it. You get that solved, then I'll vote for you forever. Thank you. Okay. I'm a little chagrined to bring this up with my my resigned. Uh, uh, physician sitting over there, but we now have no medical care for those yes. right. And right. this is a huge problem. I mean, we we have our our pediatrician uh, 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 retired and our primary care doctor retired, and so we have an empty space, and we have nobody filling it. And so it seems to me that this is. This is insane that this, you know, this island is, we, we all love the island, but it is not the most easiest place to get on and off. And if you have an emergency, right. uh, you know, and it, this is a disaster. We have no medical care. Has there been any approach to Cornell about this? Uh, yes. 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 Carolyn Maloney. Yes. Carolyn Maloney. Yes. 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 Talked she about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. David, can you just make a note of that? I'll be fine. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, mean, I realize that maybe this is more a state than a state. Yeah. 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 And I mean, just as quick as it was here, it was not quick, it was, it was gone. So now that we have our illustrious mayor, <laughs> right, medical physician here, mayor doctor, who is, is now retired, that has helped so many people on this island, people are now very, very confused. I'm getting calls from people that I know um, as an advocate on this island in terms of can you give me a recommendation where where do we go and people yeah. are very desperate one because they have to travel long distance two because they've had a history here with him for a long time and when you've had a history with the doctor to try to really go off island and find somebody new that doesn't know your history and doesn't even know you like like uh, Dr. Resnick has I mean personal families people, everything, so people felt safe. Right okay. now, they're not feeling safe at all in terms of that. So I've done some work trying to uh, uh, from someone and have not much good success, right. but I don't have really access to the senior levels from various hospitals. So if you could find a way to help me get through the people who run the internal medicine residency, there's a great opportunity. I just don't have a way to get through Okay, so who in particular, like, do you have a sense of more specifically? The chairman of the Department of Medicine. I, I mean, there are seven teaching hospitals. Yeah. Here, and those seven, I'll be happy to just pick the list of them. Okay, do you, and do you have a card that you can? Okay. Or David, can you get the David's going to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> David's going to be busy. You know, I, I just thought of this the other day, and Dr. Resnick may have some input on this. Years ago, we had before we had this urgent care set up here, Goldwater, when Goldwater was here, this is many years ago, yeah. for a few years they had like an emergency urgent care right. facility within the hospital. And I was thinking, well, we have Cola here that also, you know, they have facilities, they have doctors there, they have nurses. Why couldn't there be some some connection with them 
for that situation because one of, one of the things that I understand the problem is that financially it doesn't seem feasible for people to come in here and create an urgent care facility. And when one is already established, it is a colorism nursing home. It yeah. doesn't have that kind of the only they only have employee health service. They don't even have 24 hour physician yeah. because they're, they're licensed as a nursing home now. Not licensed yeah, and they don't have, they don't have whatever the system. license is, if they have medical staff, they, <laughs> they, they, they may not, be well, they're not licensed to do that. If you have an emergency at the, at the hospital, besides from having a heart attack, they're going to call 911 and yes. send you to Mount Sinai. They are not licensed to do outpatient stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a state thing, it's a state license. It's very since the state runs this island, it's a long thing at the Department of Health. Um, okay, but we'll look at other that. avenues. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Yes, I will follow up with you. Okay. Yes. So I'm David Yeah, my wife and I live in the building. Um, is there any way you've been involved in small business? And any way to bring more business onto yes. the island? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not a big enough market to a lot of people making money here, but uh, we have a lot of vacant storefronts and uh, is there any way of attracting? Uh, it's a very, I mean, we're obviously having that same issue, unfortunately, throughout <coughs> the whole city with retail vacancies. We're tracking the retail vacancy for the city council, and it's, it's unfortunately very high. It's really difficult. With that said, I'm happy to see if there's something we can do, either partnering. I mean, it, it, it's difficult. I mean, because again, it's actually small businesses where they want to go. Okay. And it's hard for us to, you know, we can't really subsidize them. So it's, it's challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> right. 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 That's a very difficult one. They don't they have to go through the um, leasing company that runs Southtown? Prayer. Prayer. Is it Hudson related? Yeah. 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 Prayer runs the leasing on <coughs> Main Street. Mm -hmm. and he, he or they set the rent. I'm happy to talk rent. to Hudson related. I mean, they I, set the rent rate. I can absolutely yeah. talk to them and see if they have any creative ideas <coughs> on that. They're really motivated to get yeah. there because yeah, they're really losing they're money by not renting the space. So it's very they're not losing enough. It seems to be. I know you had a question. It's actually more of a thank you than a question. Oh, it's all right. 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 It's Yes, thank you. I really appreciate thank that. You. It's a very, I mean, we haven't talked about this, but it's obviously a very challenging time. I am a member of the Jewish Caucus, a proud member of the Jewish Caucus, or a small but mighty caucus within the <laughs> city council. Um, for those of you that are on Twitter or on Instagram, so today I tweeted out there were posters on the east side of Manhattan, um, posters of the children that had been kidnapped by Hamas, and it said kidnapped a picture of the child and someone had put occupier on top of the word kidnapped and they're all over the east side. So I have tweeted that out early this morning and that is really, you know, but the, this stuff has to be called out immediately when there is this and we need to be very forceful about it. So thank you all for saying that. We had posters on the island as well and then all of a sudden they disappeared. They were Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, when you're talking about, uh, by the way, thank you for the, what you've done in your position in the, mm -hmm. in the council. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, I, was, I think of Williamsburg because you have plenty of foot traffic, mm -hmm. stores are jumping, people, and I think it has a lot to do with the art scene. Mm -hmm. And I think if the art scene on the island was supported a little bit more, uh, I think it would help all the, uh, uh, the vendors on the island. I think, that's I think a, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, because culture and the arts really prime the pump for retail. And we've seen that happen in so many communities uh, across the city. So, yes. And so if there are specific things you know that I can do to be supportive to help support cultural uses here, the art galleries, 
doing, you know, I mean, that makes a big difference. Okay. But right now, people come to go to the FDR Memorial. There is no publicity for Main Street. So there's no traffic so that people don't want to lose the place. I think a lot of people don't know that they this part know. of, of yes. the island yes. exists right. yes. or where the restaurants are, yeah. even in South We need South better town. signage then. Yeah. 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 Well, that's Riox's job. I know. That's what we paid them for. I thought yeah. that's what we paid them for. Hold on one I'm just going in order of, I, oh, okay. So, um, as you know, REAC really controls everything on Roosevelt yes. Island. Can you explain what your influence is on, on REAC and what your relationship is with REAC? Well, I think since I've been there, I've been very forceful. I think sometimes, you know, whether it's the Omni issue, which was stuck, you know, until I wrote the letter and got other electeds on, you know, to write the letter. I mean, I think it's the power of the bully pulpit. We, the city of New York does not control REAC. It's a state entity. But I think there is a you know, very strong role that we can play in terms of utilizing the power of the bully pulpit to either write letters, to try to really shine a light on some of these issues that are happening. Do they pay attention to you? Uh, I, or the other one? I think, look, the Omni thing we won on, uh, I got a response on my letter immediately on the tram that I wrote a couple days ago. So I think, you know, I. I I think to the extent that we're having an impact, I think, yes, we do have a strong impact. Who replied to you? Uh, I think it was Shelton. It was, yeah. yeah. Shelton Hayes. Yeah. Okay, just because you had your hand up for a very long time. Hold on one second. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Jim Luce. I've uh, never met you. And, uh, I'm very pleased to meet Jessica and Ben. Ben. Uh, never met you. I had two <coughs> family chairings here on the island. We're having our 24th annual uh, event on November 7th on Election Day. Uh, sadly, but uh, we've been to your office for a rock, and uh, I just wanted to put my face ah, to a name. Okay. But we're opening soon. I did not know your downtown uh, connection. We're, um, we are helping complete playground, which is a 40,000 square foot playground, indoor playground next to the Stock Exchange at 30 Broad okay. uh, to open. Uh, so you might be yeah. familiar with that. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Uh, close to them. Okay, so wonderful. Yeah, so on November 7th. Okay, but you need a proc. So David, he needs a proc. Can we just, could you give your card to David so we can just follow up on the proc? Okay, thank you. I know you had a question. Uh, with the transportation being such a mess right now, with the train down and the tram really very full of tourists, is there a way of extending the bus that goes into Long Island City to make a stop at the Verdon Boulevard subway stop, so people can use the subway station there. It's, it only takes it a little bit out of the way yeah. and would be helpful. That's very interesting. But, okay. yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to look into that. It's a very interesting idea. Yeah. A few months ago, you and all your co-politicians signed a letter asking that the pathway onto the promenade in front of Kohler Hospital mm -hmm. be opened because it was built and then Riyadh said, no, you can't have it. Right. They literally put the curb back just, just and now the residents of what? Yeah. The Kohler, the 500 people, they want to get on the promenade. They can't unless they go all the way up into Lighthouse Park or by the Octagon. Now, uh, the head of engineering at Riyadh has resigned uh, he left, so I don't know who's in charge. Rianca yeah. says, we're doing a transportation master plan overhaul. In simple words, nothing's going to happen. And I really want you and your fellow politicians to get on them, because you've all sent a letter and say, come on, Rianca, there's no impairment to the traffic. Right. You're inventing a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard, because the residents want to go on okay. a promenade. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we have yeah. to get you guys to kick their butts. <coughs> okay. I'll talk to David. Okay. <laughs> Hi, David. All right. I'm going to go back to the transportation issue for a minute. I brought this. I'm going to ask you to put your lawyer hat on right now. Um, we asked for resident preference in boarding the tram. And, oh. yeah. oh. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> and we were told that they can't do it. Yes. 
They can't do it because you can't give unreasonable preference to one group over another. We don't think it's unreasonable to ask for that. No. Okay, so we think it's very reasonable to ask during this time to let the residents get on because the, the so choice of this. told you that about that Three options. They, they issued a statement. Right. Right, yeah. but they, they in the they they're also violating the very law they cited because the second piece says you can't charge any and any person more than another to get on. We subsidize the tram by a million and a half dollars a year, so we're paying more than all the people so waiting on the line, and we're not getting preference. About residential preference, yes. for residents. Yes. Okay. And the letter from Rion that says that. Okay. Right. And also with your lawyer hat on, and I'm going to get real general now, it seems to me technically the city is our landlord. You're leasing this place right, right. to New York State, right. so I would think you could have a lot more oversight than, than you've been exercising over the years, because you don't want to get something back that they've ruined. And they're close. I mean, they're, they're continuing to do things that you probably wouldn't like them to do. So I would like to see from a legal perspective, do you have any ability to say, don't do that, right. don't spend their money this way because it's crazy? Marjorie, can you um, talk about the letter that Gretchen sent out in terms of the fact that, um, I, I know you mentioned at one particular time that there was uh, residents. Oh yeah, we had resident preference before. Like, they issued she cards and everything out for us. A long letter saying some, she dug up some legal, right. um, whatever, right. Um, right. to say that, this is what we can't do. So right, yeah. again, uh, piggyback off of the <laughs> fact of the legal <laughs> aspect of this is what she wrote. You might want to check into yeah. that. And while we love the Omni, that was the one thing that got us on ahead of yeah, everybody because yeah. we had our Metro cards right. and the was for the Metro yeah. card. So we okay. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. Just okay. We've got two guys back there that want to speak. Okay. Just a, I'm, I'm the board and one of the new board members, William and I. We would love more oversight. We're struggling and fighting to get the people that work there to actually work there. Um, I, can't go into the I can't even go into details because there's other board members and whatnot and it's legalities, but we would love to have access to lawyers to try to help make people do their jobs. Uh, yeah. I'm, 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 a new, you. I'm a newcomer here. Everyone has been much longer than I have, like it is three years only. But the feeling people have about real is there's no one there who cares about the residents and tries to do things for our benefits. There's an easy reflex action to say, no, we can't do this. We'd like someone to think for us. And combined with that is there's no one there running the shop right now. The chief executive and the general counsel are suing various people over employment. Yeah. They can't do yes. We have the head of engineering um, has left. There's a CFO who's just been replaced. There's, there's no one there running the shop. That's what people here think. <coughs> Okay, I've got, we got all these issues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I was just piggybacking on what Marta said about preferential. I received an email saying that some kind of law in New York State yeah. with some numbers and some letters. Right, that, that was the same one. That. Yeah, that was the same one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I just feel like the tourists, they come, they're very disrespectful. They're standing over top of people taking videos and pictures mm -hmm. and they're trying to explain that oh this is not this is public transportation no it belongs to the yacht it does not belong to the mta mm -hmm. and i've been to community meetings and it's just so much going on as far as the traffic is concerned out there on main street and having visible signage you know i've gone time and time again and said why don't you just get some lighting around the stop signs because at night I've seen, I've almost been hit walking yes. my dog. I've seen other people, like one guy, I think he must have been I household rescue. He was crossing the street one morning, it was raining, and this car kept going. And almost hit him, but he had bags, and his bags were knocked out of his hand on the ground. And he proceeded to yell at the driver, and then he kept going across the street. But that car didn't stop. They and don't, most of the time, they, they don't, don't see these stop signs. Yeah. Or they ignore the lights. It's just like, oh, oh, it's just a suggestion. No, it's a stop sign. We don't have lights out here. The island is not that big, so why not have blinking stop signs? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. They do the, the same thing happens when the buses that come in their stops and there's passengers off. These cars go around the buses and happily, this is what I'm saying. And you're stopping. I think Joyce is going to.
Are you going to close this? You're I'm going to bring up another issue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I was going to stand here and be quiet all this time. No, not at all. <laughs> Several years ago, a number of us got together in order to fight for the Euler process when they brought Cornell mm -hmm. on Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Cornell is obligated to pay $400,000 a year to Roosevelt Island. Our operating expense for Roosevelt Island is $30 million per year. All of the services that are used by Cornell in walking around in this community are picked up by every single person's pocket sitting in this room. We all pay our rent. We all pay our rent that goes to the land leases that creates the $30 million operating budget. Uh, and Cornell enjoys all of the fruits of our investment. The city of New York charges rent tax, charges hotel tax. If we were in Manhattan, the rent tax, the hotel tax, all of that money would be used to plow the streets, clean the garbage, take care of the lands, uh, landscaping, pay for, uh, pay for public safety. We have our own public safety department that we pay for that protects them. It comes out of our pocket, not fair. These are multi-billion dollar corporations that are corporate co-location partners in that facility. Why are we having to shoulder the burden? That $150,000 that should be $900,000 is our it's money. money. And no. the city of New York should be turning over the money that they collect, some portion of it, to support the services that we, this community, provide mm -hmm. for right, having Cornell there. Subway question. Okay. So a, a resident reported being told by an MTA inspector that the work is on the uh, tunnels is taking much longer than they thought, and they think it may be in, they think it may be into 2025. Yes. I'm just. Have you heard anything about I that? I have not heard that, but I'm happy to follow. If you up could on follow, that, because that's not okay. That's oh, not wow. acceptable. I don't know if this is yes. just what I was told. Okay, I, I can follow. That. So let me just say, first of all, that first of all, Joyce, Margie, thank you so much for doing this. This is such a great, a great event. And thank you all for being here and engaging with me in this conversation. We have a long laundry list of items that we are going to be following up on, so thank you for all of your comments. And please contact my office at any time with any issue that you are having. I really appreciate you all taking the time to talk to me tonight. So thank you. Thank you.